worship with Tommy Favored. Bow with Tommy Favored. Harmonizing the people of God back to Him through His Word. Spoken and sung. Hi everybody, God bless you. This is Tommy Favored. Thank you so, so much for joining me on another podcast episode of Bow with Tommy Favored. I am your host, Tommy Favored. Um, well, today I'm trying to catch up with myself. So um, I'm doing a, an episode today that I've titled Help My Unbelief. And um, actually this topic that's now a podcast episode actually became a song this past weekend um for me that god gave me and um it, it, it just ended up being a powerful song very simple but it came up and so that's what i'd like to share with you guys today it's titled help my unbelief now um just to remind everybody the purpose of this podcast is to harmonize the people of god back to him through his word both spoken and sung and so um i'd like to actually share with you first of all the lyrics to this song the the lyrics um are as follows ever since i was young i know that i believed in you mom and dad did good they set me on the path of faith every story i read i always knew it was the truth couldn't tell me nothing (laughs) because i knew so much about you But the more I grow, the more I realize my faith comes from knowing a whole lot in my head, but not my heart. So here I am, Lord. I believe that you are real and I'm ready to know you for myself. I'm ready to know you, not just what I've heard. And then the chorus of the song says, I want to know you more so my faith won't fail. Help my unbelief, Lord. I want to trust you every day. Um, and so when when these words came to mind um, on Saturday night, I had several thoughts that had gone into my mind before this inspired uh, uh, the song. And, and the thoughts I was having were basically doubt. You know, sometimes it doesn't matter how saved, sanctified, blessed, you know, and and renewed that you are as a human being who is fallible, who is weak, who messes up every other minute, you know, um, a part of you gets to a point where even though you know Jesus, even though you know what he's capable of doing, even though I know who I serve, in that moment to moment situation where something is just not going your way or things are frustrating or circumstances are messed up and you just don't know what is going on in that moment you struggle with trusting god you struggle with believing who god is and the power that he has and it's not nice to say these things it's not cute it's not you know palatable for me to say this as a christian because there's this perspective that you know if you believe in jesus you're saved you're sanctified you're speaking in tongues all that good stuff you don't have any doubts you don't ever mistrust god you don't ever say that you don't think god is going to do such and such And um, just to be honest with y'all, as much as I love Jesus, as much as I love God, and I am sold out, there is no other alternative for this life, this Tommy favored girl. There is no other person in whom I will put my trust but Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of my soul. The only one I depend on. But in that moment, y'all, I was going through something and I was dealing with circumstances and situations that had just come up and I was just so frustrated and I just doubted God. And I was like, God, but I thought you said such and such about my life. I thought you were going to do this. I thought you were going to do that. You know, I thought this was how this situation was supposed to turn out and it's not turning out that way. And I was just frustrated. And I couldn't understand everything. And, and that caused me enough frustration for me to identify the fact that I doubted God. 
and I didn't trust God in that moment and I was angry at God or I was fearful or doubtful or whatever my emotions just were not right and I was not in touch with the spirit of God as far as me depending on him fully even though I couldn't understand the circumstances and that's why I wanted to do this podcast episode because I believe I'm not alone And I believe that there are probably people out there who can relate to these emotions I'm expressing. It's not that you're not saved. You're very saved. You trust Jesus. You know there's nobody else who can save you. You know Muhammad can't do it. You know Buddha can't do it. You know, you know, Mahatma Gandhi can't do it. You know everybody out there just is not able to save your soul. You know the only way is Jesus. You've trusted in that fact. But what you have a problem with is trusting God on a day-to-day basis. It's trusting that, yes, I know you're God. Yes, I know you're all-powerful and almighty. But will you do it for me? That's the question you have. That's the question I had. I don't doubt that God is able to do it. My question is, will he do it for me? Is he willing to do it for me? And... um. And, and that was my situation. And it was so funny because God, God has blessed me with this grace of, of speaking to me through songs. And, and most of the songs that I write that may be a blessing to people, often they're, they're words that came to my heart for me. So they blessed me first before they ever became a song to bless anybody else. And again, when I read the chorus of that song, the chorus says, I want to know you more so my faith won't fail. Help my unbelief, Lord. I want to trust you every day. My prayer that night ended up being, Lord, I just I really got to know you more because oftentimes we know what God can do, but we don't know enough of his character to not allow the devil to character assassinate him to us in different situations when circumstances come up that we were not anticipating. And this has a lot to do with the book of Genesis and the first lies that the devil told Eve and Adam and whatnot and and basically how sin entered into the human race. It came from a character assassination of God by the devil to Eve. And ultimately to Adam. Because what he came at Eve with was, has God really said? Will God really do what he said he would do? Are the consequences God has told you about actual consequences? Or was he just lying to you? Or maybe he didn't mean what he said. Or maybe he didn't say what he meant. And that's that strategy that created original sin into mankind is the exact same strategy that the devil still uses today when dealing with saved sanctified christians he'll come at you with the line well yeah yeah yeah. i know god is all powerful i know god can heal i mean the bible says he can heal but why won't he heal your child you know why won't he you know give you that blessing Why won't he open that door for you? And as Christians, like I said, our issue is very different from the issue that an atheist has. The issue an atheist has is they don't believe in God at all. My issue as a Christian, your issue as a Christian is you know there is a God. You know Jesus is real. But you don't always understand his ways. You don't always agree with his ways. And so we deal with unbelief, we deal with struggling to understand God's ways and what he's doing and why he's doing it a certain way, and especially when it clashes with our will and our expectations and what we think should be his route or format of behaving. But when we can't control God's actions and they differ from our presupposed actions, and then we come into conflict with God's will in that moment. And so um, my prayer that on Saturday night when this song came ended up being, Lord, you know what? I just want to know you more so my faith will not fail. If you know God 
and and uh, and and if you heard the other lyrics to the song i said you know i i've known god all my life i grew up in church you know i've never not known about jesus christ you know as as long as i can remember being you know Co- coherent in my thoughts and in my comprehension of religion and faith and everything i know i've heard jesus i believe it every story that i've ever read in the bible i believe it but what i've struggled with from time to time is understanding god and i don't know him in the sense that i don't always know what i think he's capable of you know it's it's one thing to know about you know somebody in power you know for instance i don't know a a a king or somebody and you know you've heard about this person you've read the articles that you know the news carries and the media carries about this person but it's different when you actually know the person like on a personal intimate basis you know hey all that stuff the the media and the and the you know the the paparazzi is saying about this person is actually it's just all lies because i know this person for myself and i know what they're capable of and so when it comes to praying the prayer of god help my unbelief it's really a prayer of lord i want to know you i want to know you more i want to understand who you are and i may never understand all of your ways but as long as i know you I know your intentions towards me. I know that your methods may differ from what I expect, but your motives are always blessed and your your love is always intact for me, even in the midst of trouble. And so um, I would like to read the scripture because I basically the scripture that that says you know the words help my unbelief is from mark chapter 9 uh, mark chapter 9 verse 16 and we'll read it to i believe 24 so mark 9 16 to 24 it reads and he asked them what are you arguing about with them that that was jesus because he came into a, a, he walked in on a situation where an, um, an individual was arguing with his disciples. And so Jesus says, and he asked them, you know, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, Jesus did, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And it, is, and it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, this is the key word here, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can All things are possible for one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, Help, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe. Help my unbelief. It seems like an oxymoronic statement to say, I believe. Help my unbelief. But again, everything we discussed before we got to reading the scripture says, As Christians, we believe. We believe Jesus. We believe he is the the name above all names. We believe he's the one who saves. But yet we look at our circumstances and we see, well, I mean, I've been to church. You know, I come and I serve and I do what I know how to do. and, And But God, I'm still dealing with this problem. But God, I'm still dealing with this circumstance. But God, I'm still dealing with this situation. I believe you. I believe in you. But please help my unbelief because honestly i'm doubting right now i'm doubting 
what I'm going through. I'm doubting because of these problems I'm facing. I mean, can you really do something about it? Will you really do something about it? And so that's where this phrase, help my unbelief, comes from, from the Bible. And, it, and, and Jesus is saying, oh, faithless generation. Because if you notice something, this man had a child with a demon. And, and if you look through Jewish history, before Jesus came on the scene, there wasn't really a huge line of, of scenarios that the Jewish people could point to where someone possessed with a demon actually got those demons cast out easily. They didn't have a trail. Of, of experiences that they could refer to. There may have been a few situations here and there, but the Bible doesn't chronicle so many examples where the Jews could have said, oh yeah, this person had a demon and somebody else cast it out. So when Jesus comes on the scene, he begins to do something that is unparalleled. He is healing the sick. He raises the dead. He's casting out devils. The devils are scared of him and this was part of what even the pharisees and sadducees talked about when they were like who is this man even the demons are subject to him and blah 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 even the waves are subject to him you know all this stuff and they were they marveled because jesus was unlike any other prophet or person that they had met before because he came on the scene and his grace was different. I mean, his anointing was different. His power and the authority with which he dealt with both human beings and the supernatural realm differed from what they were used to. And so here's Jesus. And th this guy brings his son to... He said he was bringing him to Jesus. But at some point, Jesus had not yet come out to meet him or whatever. And so it was Jesus' disciples, basically his assistants. And these guys tried to cast out the demon, and they couldn't. They really couldn't. They had not understood the authority in the name of Jesus quite well yet. They didn't know how. They didn't know exactly how to deal with that situation. And so the thing, it stumped them. And it beat them down. And, and now the, there's a crowd. And now the people who are observing these scene, you know, th this scene and these happenings are like, yeah, your disciples couldn't do it. Well, let's see if you can do it. And oftentimes we begin to doubt God because we see followers of God fail. You know, it's it's so funny because you go to this pastor and maybe that pastor couldn't help you out with that situation and suddenly you doubt God. Well, at what point did the pastor's failure become God's failure? Yes, he's, you know, an instrument that God uses. And yes, that prayer partner and yes, that husband and yes, that wife who failed or yes, that, you know, brother who messed you up or yes, that whoever. Yes, they failed. But at what point? Do their failures become God's failure? Because this, this is what Jesus is saying here. He's like, okay, well, I'll deal with the fact that the disciples couldn't cast out the demon. But what do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can? Like, all things are possible to those who believe in me. And so that's, that's problem number one. Is not associating the failures of God's people with God himself's failure. You understand what I mean? Just because God's disciples mess up doesn't mean God himself has messed up. Because God himself has to deal with faith, faithless disciples from time to time. And so that's number one. And then number two is you had a crowd. They wanted to observe. They wanted to watch. They wanted to see this thing. And Jesus ends up doing the miracle, but he had to get into a place with that man who had to call out to Jesus directly and say, you know, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I, I believe you, you know, help my unbelief. Because by the time this man had dealt with Christ's disciples who couldn't work the miracle, and by the time he was surrounded by people who were spectating 
and looking and seeing and saying, yeah, well, they probably can't do it. Sorry, bro. It's probably not your time. It's probably not going to work for you. You're probably going to have to deal with this situation for the rest of your life. And all of those things, in spite of his belief in Jesus, he had developed this severe unbelief based on past hurts and past experiences but he had to get to the place where he could talk to Jesus directly and say you know Lord I believe but please help my unbelief give me grace and a lot of us are in the same boat we've been through past situations yeah you've been with a bunch of frogs so now you're not expecting a prince anymore sis you know now you've been with a a lot of you know low down dirty terrible people and now you can't trust anyone yeah you've been to a church where you know there was a whole lot of mess going on with the leadership now you don't trust church Yeah, you've dealt with a couple Christians who were terrible with money. They were, you know, bad with business and and they, they were fraudulent. And now you can't do business with anybody who you think says they're Christian. So, so are you going to base the rest of your life and the rest of your faith on the failures of people or are you going to get into a place where you talk to God directly and say you know Lord I, I'm, I'm, I'm just hurt I'm, I've just been messed up a few times and, and it's really hard for me to believe but I know that I'm dealing with you not, not people, not circumstances not past situations I'm dealing with you and with you all things are possible So that's the second thing we really need to pull out of that passage of scripture that we read. Mark 9, 16 to 24. It's saying, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. Yes, God, I know you told me I was going to be blessed. I know you told me this was going to happen. That was going to happen. And here I am. It's been five years. It's still not happening. It's been 10 years. It's still not happening. Lord, what's going on? Are you ever going to do this thing? I believe. I know what you said. I trust you. But the time that's passing without my miracle coming forth has me doubting you. Please help my unbelief. So the third thing I want to highlight from this story is take your unbelief to Jesus. Don't take it away from him. See, if that man had walked off and said, yeah, I thought he could do it. I thought they could do it. And and Jesus let me down. Jesus couldn't do it. His guys couldn't do it. And he walked away. And, and, And if Jesus had asked him, you know, listen, do you believe I can do this? If he had lied, then now you're getting into lying. If he had lied and said, yeah, yeah, I think you can, but you can't. Uh, but in his mind, I'm thinking, you know, I, I don't think he can. And that would have been deception, deceiving himself right in front of God. But he was honest. He took it to God and said, Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. And that to me is just a reminder of how plain and open and legit we have to be with our faith. Don't don't come fronting. Don't come to God acting up and don't come to Jesus, you know, manufacturing prayers. Don't come to him telling lies. Don't come to him being less than honest with everything you're dealing with. Come to Jesus and say, you know, Lord, I know you're the only one who can help me. And that's why I'm coming to you. But to be honest, I'm afraid right now. To be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're doing. I'm not sure I get it. And I have to be honest with you, Lord. I love you, but I don't get you right now. But I'm never going to stop believing in you. I just, I just need you to help my unbelief. I'm bringing this issue of my faith to you and asking you to actually help my faith because I know that he in this walk of faith even trusting you is something I'm not always capable of doing by myself and so I need your grace and so I need your strength to carry on and so I need your ability to help me stand firm and stand on your promises even when I'm in the midst of the storm and things don't look like the way they should. And so you guys, help my unbelief.
grief. I've had to come to that several times. And again, just two days ago, two nights ago, I had to get in that place where I said, you know, Lord, I I really want to know you more because everything I know about you, in a lot of ways, it's head knowledge for me. I've read the word. I've listened to messages. I know this stuff off the top of my head, but I want to get to a deeper place of my relationship with you where I know you. I don't just know of you. I don't just know about you, but I've talked to you. I have felt your presence. I have interacted with you on a supernatural level. And so to some degree, I know based on my personal experience with you, Lord, what you are capable of doing. And so when I see a situation that doesn't look like it, but I know what you've said, I know based on personal experience that I can trust your word, that I can trust that you will do what you say you will do because you've done it in the past and I've seen it and I've tasted it. I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And so nobody can change my mind about that because if all you know is book knowledge and you don't have the theory down, you, you, I mean, you don't have the practical side of it down, all you got is theory, you're going to be confused when life hits you upside the head and you're trying to read the word, but it's not sinking in in that moment. And you're trying to listen to worship music and it's just not getting through in that moment. And people are telling you, oh, it's okay, everything's going to be fine, and take heart, and God is good. And you can't say all the time. You can't respond with an amen because you're doubting God. Because you know what? You know the words. You know what you've heard. But you don't, you don't have a personal, grounded experience that legitimizes everything you've heard. And that's where I'm going with this is in my next level of relationship with God. I want to know God so much more. I want to be like Moses where I've seen him on Mount Sinai. I've seen what he can do parting the Red Sea. He's given me the commandments, not just by hearsay, but directly from God. And even if I break those things and drop them in a moment of rage and I have to go back and scribble them on rocks because I messed up the first part of it, I know what I saw and I know what I heard and I know who he is. And nothing will make me doubt him because I don't just know about him, I know him. And this is, this is the prayer of the man who says, help my unbelief. I believe, but help my unbelief. How many of us are here and we know that we're Christians. We know we're, we're Jesus people, man. We're, I'm never just going to become a Muslim or become something else. It's Jesus for me and that's that. And I know who I put my trust in. When I leave this earth, I know where I'm going because my trust has been in Jesus Christ and not me and nothing else. But the question is in the day-to-day stuff, do you trust him? About your job, do you trust him? About that relationship, do you trust him? You trust him for the big stuff like salvation. But what about the little stuff? Do you trust him for that? Do we trust that the Holy Spirit is actually interested in our daily commute? Do we trust that the Holy Spirit is actually engaged in what we watch on TV, what we listen to via audio, what we say to people in joking manners? Are are we aware that God is actually wanting to be so intricately involved in our day-to-day things? And are we willing to get to that point where we want to go deeper and we want to get further in Jesus so we don't just know about him but we know him because until we get to that point we will be a lot of unbelieving believers because that's what this man was he was a believer but he didn't believe in that moment and that's why he cried out to Jesus and said please I believe but help my unbelief How many times do we read about the disciples 
These guys were Jesus' disciples, okay? They were no one else's disciples. They had made it clear that they were following Jesus. They were his disciples. But Jesus would do stuff and they wouldn't believe it. Jesus told them, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm coming. I'm going to be the son of man is going to be, you know, killed and he's going to die and he's going to come back. And these guys didn't believe it, but they were Christ followers. They believed in Jesus, but they didn't believe him. They didn't believe what he said he was actually going to do. Another classic example, the, the church that was praying for Peter when Peter was in prison. And these guys were interceding on Peter's behalf and praying, Lord, please release Peter. Please set him free. Please don't let him get killed. And sure enough, God sends an angel and the angel goes to the prison and unfetters Peter and says, all right, doors open, walk out of here. And Peter walks out of there and he goes to the fellowship meeting and he knocks on the door and this lady goes to the door. She sees Peter and she slams the door in his face. And she's like, wait, wait, Peter's Peter's here. And the people are looking at her like, first of all, you crazy. Second of all, we don't believe that. <laughs> but y'all praying about it though so clearly you believe in God enough to pray to him but when it actually happened you technically show that you didn't believe God was going to do it and that quickly so you had unbelieving believers you had people who believed but who needed help with their unbelief and and you know what let's not glamorize unbelief it's not cute we're not supposed to be that way because the Bible also warns us. It says to us, you know, a man who doubts is unstable in all his ways. And it's, it's very hard for that kind of person to receive from God because they doubt him. It would have been very difficult for that man to have a son healed by Jesus because he was already coming at him from a place of unbelief. He was wavering. Just like Peter on the water. He says, Jesus, can I walk on the water the way you are? And Jesus says, yeah, come on, come to me. And he starts walking on water. And then at some point he starts looking at the waves. At some point he takes his eyes off Jesus. And he starts looking at the circumstances around him. And he starts sinking. And he cries out, Jesus, save me. And Jesus holds his hand and says, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt though? You were already right there. You were already doing it. And then you started doubting me. And that's how it is with all of us, you guys. We're all of us who are saved and already believe in Jesus. I love something Chuck Missler used to say all the time. He said, you know, every day God will find a new way to ask you, do you trust me? Every day. Maybe it's that paycheck you were supposed to get and suddenly something goes wrong with it. And you're like, but God, that's what I was supposed to use to pay my rent. But God, that's what I was supposed to use to take care of this bill and that bill. And you know God is faithful, but now you're like, uh, but like my paycheck, that's what I was supposed to get to take care of this stuff. And now it's not showing up. So what am I supposed to do? Now you don't trust God anymore. Now you're like, God is not cool. God is not right. This situation ain't right. But God is like, why are you doubting me though? If that way doesn't work out for you, who's to say I can't turn water into wine? If this thing isn't working out, who's to say you can't, you know, be instructed to hit the rock and water will come out of it? Yeah, I understand you're hungry and you're not in Egypt anymore. You're in the wilderness, but you're hungry. Who's to say I can't send manna from heaven? Yes, your paycheck didn't come through. But hey, who's to say I can't speak to the heart of somebody to call you up and cash up you your rent money real quick? You know, it's just it's every day. God will find a way to ask you, do you trust me? Like, do you really, really trust me? Will you walk with me every day? And when I'm walking on water, will you join me on water because you trust that I will not let you fall? And I'm talking like this with a whole lot of confidence right now because I'm doing this podcast. But the honest truth is I still struggle with this, you guys. I still have my moments. Two days ago, 
maybe tomorrow again it might happen again where I'm I'm just like God I don't know what you're doing I don't understand I'm I'm not sure I believe in you but I need help I need help believing in this moment and and what I'd like to leave you with is just like that man please know that you should bring that unbelief with you to God bring it with you to God because he already knows about it it's it's kind of like you know Adam and Eve in the garden back to that scenario and they eat the fruit and 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 and, and then they cover themselves and God shows up where they can see him and he says you know who told you you were naked God saw everything. God knew everything, but he was asking a rhetorical question like, who told you you were naked? It's not that I don't know. I'm waiting for you to tell me. It's just like a parent. You know something bad that your kid has done. You've already been to school and you knew that they did something bad in class because the teacher, you, you already know. The teacher already called up the parent. So parent already knows. But then the child shows up and they're like, so where were you? Why did you skip class today? And they're waiting for that child to tell them the truth. They're waiting for them to be honest with themselves and not lie to their face. And that's how it is with God. When you have the unbelief and you have those moments of wavering, please take it to God and say, Lord, help my unbelief. Yeah, you know what, Lord, I'm so sorry. Like, I totally skipped class today because I... (laughs) I was stupid, you know, I, I did something wrong, I, I didn't, I, I, I shouldn't have, and it was wrong, and, and I'm sorry, and I need you to help me, actually, at this point, and, and, and at every point, for that matter, and be honest with God, just like Adam and Eve, hey, who told you to eat the fruit, why, how, why, why do you think you're naked? And, and don't lie. Just tell them the truth. Because at that point, you're standing before the only person who can actually help you. Because if you're doubting, you're already doubting. Because you already know God is the only one who can help you. And you're just concerned about his methods. But instead of being afraid and distrusting his character, you may not understand the method, but don't distrust his character go to him because you know that he cares for you the bible says his yoke is easy his burden is light says you should cast your cares on him because he cares for you that's what that scripture says you cast your cares on him because you know that he cares for you And even when you don't understand stuff, you know that he cares for you. You just, you believe him. You believe God is, is, is someone who his intentions are always good towards you. So God bless you guys. I'm not going to do this much longer. I, I, you get the picture. Just take it to Jesus. Take that unbelief to Jesus. Take that doubt. Take that fear take it to Jesus just like I have you know in 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 this podcast and just like I had you know two days ago when I had to do it through song and I had to go to God and say Lord I need your help I need you to help my unbelief I trust you I believe you I know who you are but I'm just doubting what you're gonna do about this situation And then you know what? When God comes through for you at the end of that situation, remember it. Because oftentimes our problem as human beings is um, we forget. God will actually do stuff for us, come through for us in the nick of time, in that last minute. And we'll be like, oh my God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You Y'all better know how Jesus came through for me. And then two weeks later, something else is so dire and so difficult and you don't know how you're going to make it through and you start doubting God again because we have such short-term memories and we forget how quickly we forget who he is and what he's capable of doing and instead we begin to doubt him instead of recognizing that we're the ones who are constantly vacillating in our faith And we need to just hold on to God and never let go. We need to hold on to him and depend on him 
and stay steadfast and unmovable, unwavering, unvacillating in our trust of Jesus because we know that he's good and he will be with us through all circumstances. Go to God with that unbelief. Whatever that circumstance is that's so difficult for you that you're doubting Jesus, go to him, trust him, and say to him, Lord, I, I believe you, but please help every area in my life where there is unbelief and where I'm not certain of what you're going to do. Help me not to fail in that moment. Help me not to abandon my only help, which is you, because I see something scary. Because you're bigger than those things. Because just like the word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes, in this world we will have many trials, but we should have no fear because you, Jesus, have overcome the world. So please, God, we believe, but help our unbelief. Help those areas where we doubt. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast episode of Bow with Toby Favored. Um, I appreciate you. Hope this blessed you. Please share this with anyone you think needs to hear this message or anyone you think this message will be a blessing to. Bring in our worship with Toby Favored. Bow with Tommy Favored. Harmonizing the people of God back to him through his word, spoken and sung.